this picture, yeah. Lord, and let your spirit just rest upon me, Lord. Let the words that I speak be you. Let it come straight from heaven, God. Let there be no confusion. Let there be no anxiety, Lord. Let there be yeah. peace in your truth. Yeah. Yes. Let it pierce our hearts, Lord. Let it transform us to make us new, to help us know who we are in you. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you that you are here with us. Lord, we thank you that you have called us righteous. Mm -hmm. We are the righteousness of Christ. Yes. And Lord, we thank you that we have that confidence in you. And it comes through faith. So Lord, let this word go forth and let it transform us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can we pull up that picture? <coughs> All right, well, y'all can't see it too well. But that's me. That was um, about two and a half years ago, two days before my 25th birthday. I was in Boston. I look fancy. I'm holding a very, well, sitting next to me is a very expensive, fancy purse. But I was broken. Like, I don't look it, but I was completely broken at that time. I was living a lie. I was married, didn't know I was married, in an emotionally abusive relationship, financially abusive relationship, just completely lost. Um, but even then, God called me righteous. So, um, I don't know, God just really put it on my heart this week to build up our faith and confidence in who he's called us to be. And if we think about this verse, and if we think about Abraham, so Abraham's a father of faith. Yet he had so little faith that he slept with his wife's maid and made a baby. But yet God still called him the father of faith. Mm -hmm. And he did that because Abraham believed in trusted in God, and because of that, it was credited to him as righteousness. Mm -hmm. And God doesn't look at us in one point in time. He looks at the complete picture of our life. Mm -hmm. At that moment in time, he didn't believe what God said, but he knew that in the end, he would trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. So don't look at that one point in time, that one situation that you're in, and think that's the end of your story. Right. Believe in God. That's good. Believe that he knows the beginning and the end. He's yeah. Alpha and Omega. He does have a plan for you. Yeah. But righteousness, us being called righteous, truly doesn't depend on God. Because God asks for us to have the faith. And if we have the faith to believe that we're righteous, then it will be credited to us. But if you don't believe it, it kind of goes to waste. So um, there's a verse that kind of... Um, explains that a little bit better and it's in Hebrews so let's turn to Hebrews 4 hold on put down this one. so Hebrews 4 and let's start in verse Let's start in verse 1. And I have the Amplified Version, so it's, it's going to be real expanded and deep. But, Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still holds and is offered today, let us be afraid um, to distrust it, lest any of you should think he has come too late and has come too short of reaching it. For indeed, we have had the glad tidings, gospel of God, proclaimed to us just as truly as the Israelites of old did when the good news of deliverance from bondage came to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them because it was not mixed with faith. With the leaning of the entire personality of God in absolute trust and confidence in its power, wisdom, and goodness by those who heard it, neither were they united in faith with the ones, Joshua and Caleb, who heard, did believe. So. God promised the Israelites that they would go to the land of milk and honey. But because they didn't believe, they didn't go. Yet that promise was, was there for them. It was an existing city that they could have lived in, but because they did not believe, they didn't go there. And, you know, a lot of people are like, well, how do I build up my faith? Like, I want to believe, but I can't. Let's turn to another verse. The Bible gives us all the answers, literally, to everything. So... Let's go to Romans 12. And 
Um, let's start at verse 2. Actually, sorry, it's Hebrews 12. Yeah, Hebrews. So looking away from all that will distract us to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, giving us the first incentive for our belief and is also the finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection. So even that thing that we need to help make us righteous doesn't come like from us working hard, building our muscles, dressing a certain way. It just comes from God. It just comes from Jesus. So we need faith to please God, and that thing we need to please God doesn't even come from our working. Yeah. Like Jesus just says, believe in me, like ask me, and I am the author and I am the finisher of your faith. Yeah. yeah. So God will do it for you. If you're feeling faithless, if you know you need faith so that you can be righteous, so that you can attain the goals that God has for you, just say, Jesus, you told me that you're the author and the perfecter of my faith. Yeah. You told me that you're not man, that you lie. You told me that you are the way, the truth, and the light, so be my truth and be the finisher of my faith. <laughs> be the author of my faith. Perfect my faith to believe that thing. And that's what I had to do in this situation. It's a long story. My life was like a legit soap opera for like a year and a half. Um, but it, it took building up to get to that place. I was sexually abused as a child. I grew up in a home with domestic violence, just hot mess. And... I didn't feel loved. I didn't know the love of the Father. I, and that's something that sexual abuse does to you. It makes you distrust, it makes you fear. And that's kind of what I did all my life, but I covered it up with being really smart. And I thought that being really smart would make me sufficient, but God is the only one that can make you sufficient. Um, so I found myself in this awful relationship. I thought I was doing God's will. I thought I heard the voice of God. Ended up getting like $40,000 in debt. Like the person just racked up cards. And praise God, I have 1500 left. Oh, Amen. 1500 Dave Ramsey, he's your boy. Dave Ramsey will let you out of trouble. <laughs> and that's, that's a testimony for another time. But, um, but yeah, I mean, the person did it for immigration benefits. They didn't really want to be married for marriage. They just wanted to get benefits to get into the country. Um, but anyway, found myself out of that situation. God plucked me up. Yeah, yeah. Because he saw me as righteous in the midst of me not being, not thinking that I was righteous. Mm -hmm. So um, it was about a month leading up to my 26th birthday. I did a fast for a month. And I'm just like, God, I feel lost. I feel broken. I don't know who I am. I can't even write my blog post like I used to. Restore whatever Satan tried to take away from me. And within four days of finishing that fast, everything was exposed. Like, everything was laid out. The cheating, the, it was all laid out. Um, okay, so now I found myself out of this situation. But now I'm continually filled with shame and guilt, which I have all my life insecurities and I had to pick up the word of God and these were verses that I I continually just spoke out I wrote them on note cards I had them posted all over the place so Colossians 3 10 and have clothed yourself with a new spiritual self which is ever in the process of being renewed and remolded into fuller and more perfect knowledge upon knowledge after the image and the likeness of him who created it. So I like the amplified version because I feel like it just makes everything real juicy. But basically it, all it's saying is put on some new clothes. Clothe yourself with clothe yourself with the new spiritual self that you are. Like God has made you righteous. Just put on the outfit. Mm -hmm. Wear it. Right. And wear it proudly. Yeah. Yeah. Another verse that I focused on was 1 John 1 9. If we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promise, and will forgive our sins, dismiss our lawlessness, and continually cleanse us from um, 
from all unrighteousness, everything not in conformity to his will and purpose, thought, and action. So in both of these verses, it gives us a mandate. God doesn't just like um, drop righteousness, you know, in a Sunday, in an ice cream Sunday, and you eat it. Like, you have to do the work. You have to put on those new spiritual clothes. Mm -hmm. You have to confess your sins. Yeah, yeah. So truly, to live righteously, it's up to us. Mm -hmm. God has God has laid out the present, but you have to decide to open it. Mm -hmm. You have to decide to take off that wrapping paper, open the box, All right. take that gift. Yeah. And that's what I had to do in that place. Well, at that time, I was still in that messiness, but afterwards, feeling broken, confused, lost, I had, to, I had to do these things. I had to remind myself of God's truth. So God calls us righteous from the beginning, but it's up to us to decide if we want to claim that or not. Mm -hmm. And we can only claim it through faith. It's not through works. And thankfully, the faith that we need to do it doesn't come from our work. Mm -hmm. It comes from Jesus being the author and perfecter of our faith. Yeah. So all we really have to do is believe. And he'll help you to believe. Because <laughs> if we think about, you know, Abraham, he was the friend of God. He was the one where righteousness was credited to him, but he was not perfect. He was actually very far from perfect. He was sin he was a sinful man. We all are sinful people, but how was righteousness credited to him? Just because he believed God. I mean, he legit took Sarah's maid, Hagar, had sex with her, and had a baby because he did not believe God's promise that a baby would be formed through him and Sarah. That sounds like faithlessness. How was he then called the father of faith? Just because he believed God. It didn't matter about his works. If it were based on our works, we all deserve hell. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. We all deserve it. Every single last one of y'all and me. <laughs> but it's just God's goodness. That's all you need. That's all you need for whatever situation you find yourself in. Whether you have been addicted to drugs, you've cheated on your spouse, you you know, went to jail for even murdering somebody. God can forgive you. God forgave Saul, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who wrote like more than two thirds of the New Testament. It's not about our works. It's not about your works. Even at that place, God considered me righteous, but I wasn't because I didn't believe it. I didn't have the faith for it. But the minute I started putting on my spiritual clothes, like it talks about in Colossians, confessing my sins, faith started building up in me, and I knew that I was righteous. Um, let's see some other verses that I wrote down. So if we look at Romans 4, it talks about what are some of the benefits of being righteous. And as we know, being righteous has nothing to do with what you do. It's what you believe. And even what you believe doesn't come from you working to believe it. It's just saying, hey, God, you're the author and perfecter of my faith. I believe that you're going to build my faith to believe X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let me find those verses. All right, so... Romans 4, verse 6. Thus David congratulated, congratulates the man and pronounces a blessing on him to whom God credits righteousness apart from work he does. So this is what happens when you're righteous. Blessed and happy and to be envied are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered up and completely buried. Mm -hmm. Blessed and happy and to be envied is a person of whose sin the Lord will take no account nor reckon it against him. So when you're righteous, that's what happens. Your sins are forgiven. And that's how Abraham was able to be called the father of faith. Because at the minute he believed, God, God transformed his heart. So he was no longer doing the deeds that he liked to do in the past that were sin-filled. God just transformed him. Spot on, right there. And that's all that righteousness is. Righteousness isn't you being perfect. Righteousness isn't that you never had sex out of marriage. You never did drugs. You never cheated on an exam. You never lied on your taxes. Righteousness is just believing in God. Because when you believe in God, then the blood that was yeah, shed on yeah. the cross covers you. Yeah. When the blood covers you, yeah. you are seen as white as snow. Yeah. White as snow. Yeah. 
So when God sees you, he sees a son, and we know his yeah. son is perfect. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. That's it. I feel like we make this so complicated. Yeah. Oh, I messed up. Oh, I did this. Oh, 20 years ago. Let it go. Mm -hmm. Let it go. And ask God to help you to believe. God, I don't have the faith right now, but I believe you are going to give me the faith to believe. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And when you give me the faith, I know that I can then be righteous. Yeah. And when I am righteous, my sins are forgiven. And when my sins are forgiven, I know who I am and I have the power to do all the things that God has called me to do. And the things that God has called us to do is bigger than us. Yeah. It's so big. It's, it's bigger than your little circle, your little boyfriend, your, your parents, your kids. It's about people. It's about people's lives. It's about people being inspired to be different. And then there's a domino effect. Remember the game Domino? One taps. And it just knocks all of them down. That's what's supposed to happen. As I started believing in myself, as I got out of that place, God is calling me to share this story to help other women realize it doesn't matter if you're a piece as a child. It doesn't matter if you're a divorce. It doesn't matter if you came from a broken home. What matters is the blood. What matters is the blood of Jesus. And when that shed on you, nobody can tell you nothing. <laughs> nothing. Because <laughs> if God is for you, who can be against you? Nobody. 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 Like, in that place that I was in, someone could have just committed suicide and just been done with life. Like, it was a, it was a, it was a bad low place. <laughs> low, 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 low place. $40,000 in debt, you're in med school, you know, med school's busy. I'm having to work 20 hours a week doing Uber and Lyft. Um, this guy is off cheating, doing whatever, lying on me on top of it all. <laughs> and people are saying, get him deported, file for bankruptcy. And I just said, you know what? I'm cutting all y'all out. <laughs> and I need to focus on what the word of God says. I don't even know if I can like pray or hear the spirit of God because I don't trust it because I trusted it and that's how I found myself here. Meanwhile, it was just the lust and the fear and the shame inside of me that was speaking. Deception. It wasn't God's voice. <laughs> but I said, you know what, God? Yes, I am scared to hear from the Holy Spirit, but I know I can read. And I know the Bible is true. So I'm just going to start reading the Bible and I know everything else will like, fall into place somehow. <laughs> I remember crying out to God one day because this person is not helping me pay any of the debt. And like, as a school, you don't, as a student, you don't have any money. And you know, God was like, is he your provider or am I your provider? And I was like, ooh, oh, can you like both be my provider? <laughs> can you like make him like pay? And he's like, no, nah. like you have to trust me through this process. So I started you know, praying that word over me that God says he is the supplier of all my needs according to his riches and glory. I don't know how the heck I'm going to pay off $40,000 of debt. But I just started trusting in God. And people would tip me. They're like, oh my gosh, you're so pretty. Here's $100 Uber. <laughs> and, you know, I told, I, I never stopped tithing during that time. I never was late on paying any of the bills. Um, and I look good doing it too, like. <laughs> but, um, um, I told God anytime someone gives me a tip, cash tip, I'm gonna take it to church. And that, you know, someone would think you need to save up, you need to squander all the money and put it towards the debt. But I said, this situation is is a mess. No one can get me off of God, so I need to trust the way His word says. So this guy gave me a hundred dollar tip on the Uber ride. And God's like, what are you going to do? Are you going to keep it? Or are you going to stick to your promise? And I stuck to the promise. I should not have just $1,500 left to pay out of forty k. And this was... This was... Wait, maybe two years ago? That's when I started paying it off. And yes, I am a physician, but I promise you, I don't make that much money. I'm a resident. I mean, I haven't, like, finished my training, so I do not make much at all. Um, but you yeah. Amen! Yeah. Amen! Yeah. Billionaire! <laughs> yeah. Amen. Thank you for correcting me on that. 
Yeah, it's common and I believe it. So I can bless people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I had to I had to look myself in the mirror and speak these things over myself. You are the righteousness of Christ. If you confess your sins, you will be forgiven. Clothe yourself with new spiritual clothes. Behold, all old things have washed away. God has made everything new. You have to put in that work. Just And it's like, it's not even really work. It's just like, hey, God, I don't believe your word, but I'm going to just say it out. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more you say it, the more it comes out of your mouth and goes into your ears and registers in your brain. God starts changing those neurons. He starts doing things in your mind to set things in place for you to believe. So, like, really, just, just, it doesn't even, you don't even need to say, okay, well, I don't believe it, so I'm not going to say it. Just say it. And just say, like, God, I don't really believe this, I'm just going to say it anyway. Just keep saying it more and more. And he, being the author and perfecter of your faith, will build up your faith. And when your faith is built up, you're going to be righteous. And when you're righteous, your sins are forgiven. And when your sins are forgiven, he sees Jesus in you. Amen. That's it. That's it. That's it. That is it. That simple. One plus one is two. That's it. So simple. I shouldn't be standing here right now feeling the way that I do about myself, my God, and the life that he's given me. I should have killed myself. I should have. <laughs> uh, I said I should have killed myself. Yeah. Like if if I did not believe in God, I should not be here. I would not be here. I would not. But God. But God. But God. It's just about the blood. And it will set you free. And it will put you on a solid ground that you can stand confidently and proclaim the goodness of God. So you are righteous. Even doing that line of code. <laughs> even having sex outside of marriage. Even lying on your taxes. You are righteous. Just trust in God and he will do the work of changing you. As Abraham was laying down with another woman, God still saw him as righteous. But Abraham had to believe. And believing just comes from asking God to help you do it. You're the author and perfecter of my faith. Help me to believe. So, Lord, we just thank you right now that, Lord, you are building up our faith as you promised. You told us, Lord, that you are the author and perfecter of our faith. Lord, you told us that we are the righteousness of Christ. Lord, help us shift our hearts. Take that stone-cold heart out of us, God, and make it a heart of flesh. Lord, help us to trust in your word. Help us to sit in your word. Help us to sit in your word and help us to speak out that truth, Lord. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. So, Lord, I thank you that you are meeting every individual in every situation that they're in. However bad it may seem. However dark it may be. However hopeless it may seem. Lord, you are the God of the impossible. You have done it over and over and over again. Lord, you've shown it with every single person in the Bible. You didn't use perfect people. You use real people. People that have problems. And you showed your goodness in their lives, Lord. And you helped them to prosper. You did it for Abraham. You did it for David, who was laying with Bathsheba. You did it for Saul, who was murdering Christians. You did it for Gideon, who didn't believe in himself, Lord. You are doing it in our lives, even today. So, Lord, I thank you right now that you are putting a spirit of faith in us in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you are canceling out the spirit of fear right now in the name of Jesus. The spirit of deception, the spirit of lust, the spirit of greed. Cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I give us your spirit of truth. Lord, give us your spirit of righteousness. Lord, build up our faith that we may believe in the person that you have called us to be. Take the scales off of our eyes. Help us to stop seeing ourselves as this world is trying to conform us to be God. And help us to see ourselves as you have created us to be, Lord. And that is the true us. That is the true us. 
So Lord, we thank you and we declare ourselves as righteous. We declare ourselves as righteous in the name of Jesus because of the blood of Jesus, not because of the works we've done, not because of the good works, not because of the bad works, but Lord, because of your love and because of the blood that was shed on the cross for our sins. So Lord, we thank you right now. We thank you for your goodness, God. We thank you, God. You are a good, 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 good father. And Lord, we will trust in you all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.